Hello, hello. So let's talk about niching down. I have been getting a lot of questions and comments and things like that um, about niching down and about whether or not it makes sense for you to niche down. And there are four major reasons that most people in real estate agents in particular are afraid of choosing a niche. And I'm going to address each one of them one by one, but let's start with just what, what are those four? And let me know as I go through these, um, you know, just drop it in the comments, which one of these is you. You're afraid of turning away business. Two, you don't wanna feel boxed in. Three, you're afraid of choosing the wrong niche. And four, you don't know how to find your niche. So I think that for most people, it's going to be one, number one, which is that you're afraid of turning away business, which we're gonna address in a second. So let's start with number one. We'll kind of go through them one at a time. And But before we do, I just wanna briefly um, talk about or tackle the idea of defining niche, right? So um, I like to think of your niche as your who and your what, okay? So your who is, well, who? <laughs> your who is your target market. And your what is, you know, what is the actual solution or the service that you provide that speaks to your who? Um, so you need to be super clear on both pieces of the puzzle. So remember, people aren't looking for someone to just open a door for them. Those days are long gone. We are no longer the keepers of information. Um, you know, back in the day when I first got my license, like the internet was not this big thing. There wasn't as much information that was readily available. So, you know, the role of the agent has actually shifted a lot. Um, and the value that pr we provide or the service that we provide has to shift and change with that as well. Otherwise, we have a really big, big problem or we have trouble marketing. So um, let's go back to the four fears. So number one, um, being afraid of turning away business. So it might seem like you're limiting yourself when you focus on a niche, but it's actually the opposite that's true, right? And here's why. <clears throat> when you target a specific group of people with a specific with a specific solution that they want or they need, um, and for most people that they're actually actively looking for, it actually makes the marketing side of things so much easier. And I, you, I mean, you've heard me talk about this a million times before that, you know, as an agent, you have two jobs. You are a realtor, but you're also a marketer. And you don't get to be a really great realtor if you're not actually a pretty good marketer, especially nowadays, because that when, what ends up happening is, you know, you can be a really fantastic, you could be the best realtor in the world. But at the end of the day, if you don't have enough clients to serve, then, you know, it, it, it becomes like, it becomes kind of a, a moot point. So um, when you actually niche down and you target a specific group of people, then you can speak directly to them. You can use their own language. You can create emotional connection. You can touch their hearts. You can touch their minds. And again, you've heard me say this a million times. People make decisions with emotions first, and then they back those decisions up with logic. So all of your services can actually be then tailored to them it's way easier to become like the best of the best. It's way easier to become an expert in that area, solving those specific problems, which actually allows you to charge more. It allows you to create income, in, in sorry, inbound clients. And inbound clients don't haggle on commission, right? And so again, it, it just, it completely shifts the power dynamic and it completely shifts the way that you actually run your business. So you do your best work because you're doing the work that you actually love working with the people that you actually love with the creating solutions for those people when you do that you get more referral business um, and then people will know who you help and what you help them with you become known for something as opposed to just being um as opposed to just being just another agent out there and there's so much real estate noise out there that it's actually really hard to cut through it and the only way to actually really cut through it is to niche down now being afraid of being boxed in is always going to be like the next one. And so that's number two, being afraid of being boxed in. And focusing on a niche doesn't mean that you can't help people that don't fall within that niche. I'm not asking you to get rid of half of your business. What I'm saying is that when we niche down and we master it or we dominate one niche, you are actually getting more business in that niche because your marketing is so good. And then all the other stuff that you already get is still going to happen. 
you have a clearer focus. You can target your marketing and your service package and your business actually becomes more scalable because when you work within or you dominate a specific niche, it's easier for you to put a service package together with automation, with help, with delegation, with all the things that actually it takes to scale because you're solving similar problems. Um, and you're not stuck in that niche. Your niche is going to evolve and refine itself and expand over time. It's not just that you're like only going to work with these one people for the rest of your lives or for the rest of your career. So, and there's two major ways that you can actually do this. One is that you can take your solution to other markets, right? The other way is to, you know, branch off into, into, into your next section of niches. But, you know, let's say that you specialize in upsizers and you are in one specific suburb. Maybe instead of trying to serve everyone in that suburb, what you do is you just go to the suburb next door. You also specialize in upsizers there. There's a million different ways to do this. But, you know, the, this old school idea of geolocate, of geofarming and, and, you know, really dominating just one like postal code or one zip code, it's really old school. And the only reason why we used to do that way back then is because it was the only way to be consistent and frequent. It was the only way to actually be in front of people on a regular basis because we didn't have the internet, right? And so it, we either had to do things manually, which was cold call and door knock them, well, or we had to physically like put something in front of them, which was flyer. And we all know that like those things are actually not scalable. So again, when we have this tool, the internet, which we're communicating through right now, now we have the ability to actually niche down in a different way and a more effective way. So um, the, the key or the idea here is to start with one target market and one solution and then be able to grow or to expand from there. So the third thing that people are afraid of is choosing the wrong niche, right? And, and in my opinion, you know, do people choose the wrong niche? Sure. Some people, it's like it, earlier on in their careers, they may decide to want to work with, I don't know, first time buyers. But we all know that like 10 years down the road, you do not want a business full of first time buyers, but you can change your niche and your niche is not forever. And the other thing too, is your niche will actually grow and expand with you, right? So you're going to want to review who you're niche down to as you move forward with your business, of course. And so, and you know, your marketing is going to change and evolve with it, especially as the market changes, but you will grow with your niche. So let's say you start with first time buyers. All of those people that you that you serve as first time buyers will eventually become upsizers, right? So you're going to grow, grow, grow up with your niche. But at the same time, your niche is also going to move with you. And it creates this situation where if you let's let's say that you work with upsizers because it's one of the more common niches that we see people choose is, you know, you are going to bring all of these people in every transaction. If it's allowed in your market is going to be two ends. So you're going to you're going to have, you know, the listing and the buy side and then as they get older, they're not they may not be upsizers forever. They may end up being downsizers. Your business may end up shifting. That's okay as well. It's just a matter of getting really clear that this is a marketing mechanism. The whole point of this is to make marketing actually cut through the noise so that people actually feel like you're speaking directly to them. Really good marketing is, and I, I'm sure you've heard me say this before, but really good marketing is just being able to articulate what's in the back of someone's head better than they can. When you can do that, they'll automatically credit you with the solution and they'll automatically come to you. That's how you create inbound business. It's not just, hey, look at me, look at me, call me, just listed, just sold. That stuff doesn't work. And the reason why it doesn't work is because you're not actually creating or giving the people the psychology that they need in order for them to come to you. So that was number three. Now, number four, did I even really fully address that? Maybe not. Let me just go back and make sure. <laughs> okay. So afraid of choosing the wrong niche. Your niche isn't forever. Um, you know, you also just don't want to, oh, when you're choosing your niche, you don't want to just kind of guess your niche and hope for the best. You actually do want to have to go through some time and some effort into re researching and evaluating your niche. What that means is, you know, if you are 25, you probably aren't going to want to serve downsizers. You know, you're you're probably not at the stage in your life where it's going to resonate with them best. Um, you're probably not going to understand fully like all the pains and problems. You're not going to resonate with them. Um, also, you want to look at the demographics in your market. 
if there are if there if you know if you're in a market where you know you've got a lot of people relocating in then you have to think about that you want to make sure that the niche is big enough that if there's 10,000 people in your market every year who are i don't know who are upsizing then you know and, and there's only you know there's only 200 people a year that are downsizing. Those are strange numbers, but I'm using them just as an example. You don't want to be working with downsizers. You want to work with upsizers, right? Because you 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 want to make sure that there's there's a piece of the pie that's large enough that you can really meet all your goals with that. Okay, so let's go to number four. Um, you don't know how to find your niche, or the agents who don't who are afraid of niching down. Really, at the end of the day, they're like, I just don't know how to do this. I totally understand this. I had the same problem myself really early on, but I also understood the importance of finding the niche and I really didn't know how to get that clear step to step by step instructions on how to do it. Um, everything that I read talked about finding a target market. I was with KW at the time and they were still telling me to, you know, to to geo farm. And I, I just I knew that that wasn't the right way to go. Um, but I also knew that I had to I had to niche down. So, you know, one of the first things that I did was figure out who did I actually want to serve? Who was going to resonate with me? And what was actually happening in the market from a demographic standpoint? And it actually made the niche pro the niching process really, really simple. So just to give you a couple of examples of niches that work really well, we've got things like upsizers, downsizers, first time buyers, uh, investors, seasoned investors, um, the LGBT community, if you're in a larger city, we've got people like, you know, like corporate people, like corporate professionals that are dog owners, like you can get very niche down. We just want to make sure that there's enough business in there for you. But the key here is that niching down will actually get you more business rather than less. It will refine your um It'll, it'll refine your messaging and your ability to actually create connection with the people that you want to talk to. So um, I just wanted to kind of address it because I think that there's so much fear around niching down and choosing a niche when like there actually should be empowerment around it because being able to do it is actually going to create more and more growth. But uh, yeah, hope you guys are having a fantastic day and niche down. Do it.